So a month ago, I finally released, after 8 months of work, O2, which is a Osu recreation in Geometry Dash. And I've wanted to make a video on kind of how it works, why some things were left out, why some things play the way they do. And I was scripting it, and I was coming up with footage, and it just sucked. So I'm just pretty much going to do a... I'm just going to sit down and talk about the level, and that's, that's going to be that. That's what I'm going to do. So... I'm going to go ahead and copy the level, go ahead and check out the editor, and I'll kind of just show around and explain stuff as I go. And hopefully it's interesting, and if it's not interesting, uh, fuck you. So the first really important thing to note is that there are a lot of these triggers, and these are kind of like lines of code. And you'll notice there's two sections of code. There's a lot on the left over here, this entire section. And if you go over to the right, over here, there's a lot over here too. And so, in order to make this project work as well as it does, what we ended up doing was make a map importer. So, all these triggers on the right, uh, these were not placed by hand. These were placed by lines of code on an actual script. Um, and this is kind of the position of the circle, the location of the circle, the AR, the hit sound. Uh, it has all this stuff, all this information about the circle. Uh, and that's just kind of all the info packed into here. The longer ones are the sliders because these also have scroll velocity and some other things, the rotation of course, to tell which direction it's gonna go. And then over here we have the BPM, which is the, the speed the slider moves and some pulses and stuff. We have the timer. This is the length of half the map so that we can spin the timer. Um, and we also have these packs of data, which are different things. I don't remember what this value is, but it's probably the health value or OD or something like that. All of them are packed into here somehow, and it's stored with numbers. But pretty much all it's doing is it's reading like a timeline. If I push play here, you'll see this line goes across, and it pretty much just reads it like this. And this is how it's placing all the circles where they need to go when you play the map. It just reads it left and right, and it's placed with the code that I showed before. At the top of the map, you can see most of the actual decoration uh, that was used. We have a bunch of backgrounds. We have the intro. Here's a bunch of the backgrounds right here as they span across. Uh, oh yeah, they're invisible. And the main menu area is all right here. And there's a lot of things layered on here. If I select all of it, how many objects is this? This is like, this is a lot. Yeah, we got like seven, eight, 8,000 objects. So there's a lot of objects in the menu. And this is where most of the deco comes. If we go to the object breakdown, uh, you can see most of, <laughs> most of its triggers. And there's not much decoration. Most of it's just little lines and squares, and here's the circles, and sliders and stuff. But there's not a lot of deco. It's mostly triggers. Outside of the main menu, of course, we have our settings menu, and we have all our languages. So if I go to a different page, you can see we have all these different languages right here as it goes through. And this was super fun to work on. It was really rewarding to work with different people to be able to get all the languages that we needed translated and added into the editor. The menu right here kind of just moves stuff on screen. Most of it's just placed on here, so it's really annoying to edit. Uh, but we do have everything on proper layers. So if you go through, you can kind of see where everything is well enough, at least. Now with the easy stuff out of the way, let's get into the actual complex hard stuff. So you'll see we have 24 circles and eight sliders here. And the thing about Geometry Dash is we can't just summon a circle out of thin air. They all have to be pre-existing. So that means all these circles actually move into place, reset, and then move back into place. So it cycles through all 24. Even on streams, even when there's a ton appearing at a time, it's always cycling through all 24. Same thing with the sliders. There's only a maximum of eight, so we had to cut back some of the maps that had a lot of slider spam to ensure that we never had more than like six on screen so that they had enough time to reset and get back to where they need to go. But these sliders actually extend out and they do something really interesting. And let me kind of showcase this a bit. So let's say you have a star here and a star here, right? If you have the middle of the slider as a ball right here and the slider's going, it's not gonna move here and here because we don't know what the length of the slider is going to be. It, it's variable, right? It's based on the BPM, it's based on the slider velocity, it's based on the length of the actual slider. There's a lot of things that go into it. So what it's actually doing is it's moving the ball well past the slider to this point and then back, right? It's moving like this. So it's not actually moving to the end. It moves to here and then we stop trigger it, which allows us to actually stop 
slider in its tracks and move back. And so that's what all the, <laughs> that's what all this is doing. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of this because I don't even remember. Most of this was in May, in April, I think. It was a while ago. But it's tracking the amount of times to go back and forth. It's tracking with the timers right here. There's a lot of timers in here. And what those are doing is just tracking how long to go right, how long to go left, uh, and that sort of thing. It's also tracking your inputs based on what's going on there. And of course, because we have eight sliders, we had to do it eight times because I am too lazy to figure out remapping for this. This is the whole score calculation piece right here, and it's a very long, confusing thing that I got from the OSU wiki. However, it's worth noting that I added combo scaling, and then I forgot to actually incorporate it. I gave it the wrong group, so it never spawned. And what that means is that combo scaling does not exist. And it's basically just, it's basically just your accuracy is the score. So keep that in mind if you're trying to get more score. Uh, your combo really does not matter. It's the only your accuracy. Speaking of accuracy, it's as simple as counting up the amount of 300s, 100s, 50s, and misses you have, and dividing it by the total score amount that you would have, uh, and by doing that it just gets you the accuracy percentage. It's the same thing where the 50, 100, 300 are basically the percentages, so if you get a 50, that's one-sixth of the score you could get, and if it's 100, it's one-third. So if you hit all 100s, you'd have 33% accuracy. For the game input, there were a lot of complaints about the keybinds, uh, the AWD left up right, and there's nothing we can do about that. Geometry Dash is limited to those six keys. I know the menuing is terrible, I know that there's no two keys next to each other. Uh, I complain about it as much as everyone else. If he added just S key or down arrow or something, it would add so much potential for games, and he hasn't done it. But, that said, here's our inputs. It pretty much just tracks your presses, and one thing of note is the release. Um, if you're on a slider and you release, it actually keeps your key pressed down for a tiny little bit of time, just in case you release right before a reverse, or right before the end of a slider. I believe Osu does this too, where it has a bit of leeway. I don't remember what the delay is, actually. It looks like 40 milliseconds. There's a 40 millisecond delay when you let go that it still tracks it, and that was very needed, because otherwise you'd had to be holding on the exact frame it reverses, or you hit the end of a slider, and it was super unfair. So I believe Osu does that too, and it was just a very, very easy quality of life thing to add. The overall difficulty is calculated the same way as Osu, where you have the milliseconds here, and based on the values, when you go to actually click a circle, it basically checks what the timer was at, and I'll go into the timers later. Now for the most controversial part, the approach rate. When building this, one, I didn't really <laughs> understand how approach rate worked. I, I'm i like, I don't know, 500k at Osu, so I'm not good. Um, also worth noting is how Geometry Dash works, so let me show you something. If you go into an alpha trigger, which is what we use to show and move the hit circles, right? We have that, we have a scale trigger, there's two things in here, right? It's basically, we have a timer here, and we have a timer here, a duration. And this value is preset, right? You can't change it once it's there. So that means for every AR, for every map, we'd have to code it separately. And that's just not feasible. This level's already, I think, yeah, 183,000 objects. It would be <laughs> probably in the millions if we did that, and it's totally unrealistic. That's also why Hard Rock doesn't increase the AR. The AR has to be a preset animation, and I can't change it whenever I want. The whole chart has to play out. And so what that means is I went through all the OSU charts I had downloaded, and I took a look at the AR values, and I pretty much got the ones that were used the most, and it averages them. So if you have a 9.4 chart, it's going to round up to 9.5. We did not go higher than 9.5. To be honest, I don't remember why. I think it had to do with either lag or something with it bugging because it's too quick but 9.5 was the highest and it also rounds down so if you look at 8.7 uh, that goes to 8.5 and so on so these are the ar values we have that it rounds to and i'm sorry there's not higher ars i know that harder maps feel terrible but there's not much we can do about that when we're limited with the actual you know duration of the note fade and it has to be a set value and we can only do so many here are the mods it's as simple as just changing some of the values. So if you do HR, for example, we're multiplying by 1.4 and 1.3. And uh, on easy, you're dividing them in half. Or for here, for the circle size, you're dividing by 1.75. And so these are just the little changes that it does before it actually loads the chart. For HT and DT, or half time and double time, 
all it's doing is a time warp. Um, <laughs> it worked well enough. And some people are commenting on the fact that it's only Nightcore. This is because Geometry Dash, when you speed up the song or the time warp or something, you can only speed up the song. You can't just make it faster without changing the pitch. It always changes the pitch. Now let's get into the really, really complex bit. How does it know what circle is on screen? How does it know what time the circle is on screen? And how does it know what time to do when you click? So, basically, we have a note cue. And that's denoted by the current object timer here, and also this note cue system here. To show this, I need to actually go into the level. And I'm going to go ahead and select debug mode, which puts a lot of funny numbers on the screen. There's a lot. Uh, and if you think that's a lot, then you should really take a look at a chart. So, a lot of numbers are going to appear. I know this is scary, but I'll kind of explain what's going on. You can see right here we have a note cue, right? If it starts with 100, like you see here, that means we have a slider. And if it's just a lower number, that means it's a circle. And so this is the cue. And oh, so you're never going to hit two objects at once, which makes this super easy. It means we just need one cue right here of what is currently selected. So if you hit and let go, if you remove something, it'll remove it from the cue, right? If you remove it from the play field. Whether that's from a late miss, whether that's from an early click, whether that's from hitting it perfectly accurate, doesn't matter. It's just going to remove it from the queue and move everything up one. So this is how it denotes, basically, when you click what is currently active. We have our actual current timer. I know this is moving so fast, but if you look right here, this is the milliseconds. So if I try to pause the AR circle right on here, right, 25, I paused it 25 milliseconds late. I'll try it again on this one. Uh, I did that, I think, slightly too late. Yeah, 20 milliseconds late. But you can see that this is the timer it actually reads from right here. And so what it's doing is it's taking, if you look under a slider, you see this timer. This is its local timer, right? It each has its own timer value of when it's going to be clicked or when the best time to click it is. And that updates this number every time the queue advances. I'm sorry if that was confusing. Um... I don't really have a good analogy or something to explain it, but it's basically every time a new object appears, it gets added to the queue. Whenever you go to the next object, the queue advances one, and it takes the first note, basically the note that's coming next, and it checks its current timer and sets your global timer to it. And the global timer is what's checked when you click. Up here is just some slider information, such as the amount of reverses right here, which is kind of interesting. It shows up here the amount of times it needs to go back and forth so I can count it. Um, and down here we have the BPM for flashing and stuff, which helps for a uh, key eye mode. Something that's really funny is hidden mode. Um, <laughs> here's the hidden mode for sliders. Like I said before, every single fade time has to be preset. You can't change it later. So every slider has a different fade out time based on the AR and the length of the slider, right? So the slider, it fades out until about 90% of the slider, or 90% of it's covered, I believe it is. So if you have like a two second slider, I think it takes 1.8 seconds or so to fully fade out. I don't remember the exact number, but whatever it was in OS is what we did here. Um, and so it basically just checks how long the slider is and then fades it out over the proper amount. And that took a lot of, basically these are if statements. It's just checking how long is it and it puts in the correct value and there are a lot. The performance graph was something a lot of people liked and were surprised that we were able to do, but it's really as simple as just adding 60 gradients. And it's tr what it does is over the course of the map, you'll see every map over here has these spawn triggers, one, five, seven, seven, and they're equally spaced uh, there's 60 of them across every map. So some maps are more dense, some maps are closer together. It just depends on how long the map is. But these 50, 77s, what they do is every, just equally throughout the map, it checks periodically, what is your health? And all it does then is whatever your health is, it's going to move the node up or down. And so as you play the map, it'll basically just fill the gradients up and down. And so since all the gradients are next to each other, it shows a nice curve sort of thing. Some of it looks jagged, some of it looks curved, it just depends on how fluid your health is. And I thought it was super, super cool to be able to showcase that. Here's something fun. Whenever you play a chart, it can save your score if you end up clearing it. And it saves your accuracy, your score, it's a timestamp of when you did it actually, which I thought was super cool to add. And your total score, a ton of stuff like that. So basically this item persistent trigger was added inside of 2.2 and allows us to save information across attempts, which is very useful since we kill the player after every attempt to reset all the circles, reset all numbers, make sure nothing's going to bug on another attempt, just in case something went wrong that attempt, or just to make it simpler than having to revert everything. So what this does is this allows us to save the values from the current track into the item persistent ones, 
and in doing so, we can save all that information I just said and add it all up. Everything up here is the menus. I'm super happy with how it all looks. Kinetic Frost did pretty much 99, if not 100% of this. I just had to do a few things to incorporate it into the level, but he did pretty much all the menu deco and almost all of the menu code, and it helped so much with this project. This easily would have been impossible without him. He more or less carried this project, to be honest. I just did a lot of the gameplay stuff, but he, the reason this level is so cool and the wow factor is there is because of how good this menu looks and how polished it is, and that's entirely attributed to him. Another thing I'll show is the settings menu, and it basically just has an index of which setting you're on, and it determines what button you're pressing to be able to uh, change the setting, and so on. So it's basically all through here, just all the settings options laid out. For example, in debug mode, if you toggle it on, it runs this. If you toggle it off, it runs this, and that's about it. Down here we have the letter grade stuff, which is not as simple as you'd think. It basically is determining the percentage of 100s and 50s and stuff you got, I believe. I don't remember exactly how it works but I got it as accurate as I could to Osu when I was building it. In order to keep track of progress and some other stuff, we have a spreadsheet, and <laughs> there's a lot on here. There's a lot of little things that were very, very important, such as the score equation, um, and right here are the item IDs. Think of these as variables in any coding language. If you're setting, in Geotrash it's only a number, but it's used to track everything from the number of hits you have to your score, to the currently staged note, to which mods you have on, to the Geki count, to I don't know what else is here. We have timers and hit sounds and distances for sliders. We have the cursor scale. We have the menu jukebox queue. We have the key you currently have pressed as a boolean. We have the number of hits from each key. We have the display of the circle size. So there's a ton of numbers on here. There were probably well over a thousand. Um, that were used. As far as the actual code goes, huge thank you to Britannic88 and BestGamer08, especially BestGamer08, who made the actual language that this goes to. Um, basically right here, we have an add, and what it's doing is we pick the type of object, the location of the object, the target of it, and some other stuff if it's spawned. If you don't know geometry, that's just gonna make no sense. But what it allows us to do is place an object in the editor. And there are a lot of lines in here. Like a lot. Like a lot of lines. And it's basically just placing all those triggers that I showed at the very beginning. The main takeaway I want people to have with this level is that we tried. GED is really limited, especially with keybinds and with the numbers of the fade-ins and stuff and with the offsets. We tried for most of it. Um, it's really hard to appreciate the scale of the project just looking at the triggers in general, so hopefully delving more into detail of why certain things are done and just what the different parts do will help a bit with just realizing how big of a project this was, just what the scope of it really was. Because a lot of people hate here, wow, eight months on a project, they probably did a lot. But there are a ton of little individual things that went into this. A ton of Desmos math to get the fade in times right. A ton of scripting to be able to import any chart. This, I forgot to mention until right now that it takes literally any chart from Osu and allows you to import it and play it in Geometry Dash. It, and that allowed charters to have full freedom with what they were doing. But anyways, hopefully the impressiveness of this project is enough to have people like it, even if you're not a fan of playing it, which is totally fine. I understand Osu is not something most Geometry Dash players have even remote interest in, to be honest. However, hopefully the scale of this project and the amount of work that went into it is something that you at least find interesting or can at least appreciate. So I was really happy with the legendary rating, and yeah, that's... That's pretty much it. I don't <laughs> I don't have much else to, to say. So thanks for watching. If there's any questions whatsoever you have about why we did something or what a certain part does or just any comments on the level, any bugs, let me know in the comments and I'll answer anything that I can and fix anything that I can. So thanks so much for watching and yeah, that that's it. That's it. Back to back to grinding. Back to grinding moons. I love moon grinding so much. So much. Oh, go play these levels too.